Hello everyone and welcome to the first installment of our three-part series on brushless DC motor speed control. So here we will cover the theory as well as the MATLAB and Simulink implementation of everything. So for today's video we will go over the basics of BLDC motor operation and Hall effect sensors. In the second video we will cover hysteresis current control loop and in the third video we will go over the speed control loop. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into each topic in the upcoming episodes. The basic components of a brushless DC motor are the stator, which is the stationary part of the motor, and it consists of a core made of laminated iron sheets with slots for the winding. On the other hand, we have the rotor, which is the moving part of the BLDC motor, and it typically contains a permanent magnet which produces a magnetic field. Now, how do we get the rotor to rotate in a BLDC motor? Well, we can achieve this by energizing specific windings, because when we have a current flowing through a winding, it's going to create a magnetic field. Basically, the winding becomes an electromagnet. So to achieve rotation, we can manipulate this property. For example, if we want the rotor to rotate in a clockwise direction, we can energize a coil such as that its south pole is going to attract the north pole of the rotor. We can achieve continuous rotation by sequentially energizing the coils. So you can think of it as having a rotating electromagnet on the stator's periphery and the rotor's permanent magnet follows it. It's much like a compass following the Earth's magnetic field. We can achieve smoother rotation of the rotor by employing a clever push-pull mechanism. So, in addition to energizing a coil to attract the rotor, we can also energize a second coil to repel it. And this dynamic interaction is going to create a push-pull effect. You can think of it, for example, if you and your friend have to move a heavy box together, one of you is going to pull while the other one pushes it, ensuring the box moves in a coordinated and controlled manner. But how do we know which coil to energize at any given moment? Well, the key lies in accurately tracking the rotor's position. And this is where Hall effect sensors come into play. They are placed on the stator, positioned 120 electrical degrees apart from each other, and they are sensitive to changes in the polarity of the permanent magnet's magnetic field. So when the rotor's magnetic field passes over these sensors, they are going to detect these changes, changing their output from high to low and vice versa. And we can denote here the high output with 1 and low output with 0. So we are effectively creating a position encoder with a resolution of 60 electrical degrees. So we are going to have uh, six sectors and each sector corresponds to a specific angular range of the rotor's position. And this information is then fed back to the motor controller and motor controller is going to create specific switching sequence for the three phase inverter. In order to create switching sequences for the three-phase inverter based on Hall effect sensor information, we can take a look at the three-phase inverter switches, numerated with numbers from 1 to 6. So we know that we are going to sequentially energize two phases at once. So we can mark them as 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 1. So this is for single electrical revolution. And now, based on that, for example, for the case of 1, 2, we are basically energizing the high switch of the phase A and the low switch of the phase C, and we get the switching sequence for this case, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we can do the same for the other five cases. Now we are going to see how to implement everything we learned today in MATLAB Simulink. So this is the Simulink simulation file which will cover everything we learned here today. So here we have a DC voltage source which is connected to a three-phase inverter and three-phase inverter is going to power the build DC motor. So since we need electrical degrees, we are transforming this mechanical radiance here into electrical by multiplying it by number of pole pairs. For this machine, number of pole pairs is equal to four. Then we transform it into electrical degrees by multiplying it by 180 and dividing it by P. And these two blocks serve the purpose to just keep the values of electrical degrees between 0 and 360. Then this is fed into this block 
which is going to create appropriate Hall effect sensor signals. So if the rotor angle is within the first sector, then it's going to give these values. If it's within the second one, it's going to give these values, etc. etc. Moving forward, based on these values, we are going to generate appropriate switching sequences for the inverter. And this is done here. So again, if it's within the first sector, we are going to give a switching sequence like this. If it's within the second one like this, etc. etc. It's exactly the same as I showed it before on the blackboard. So now we can run the simulation. We can see here, this is the rotor speed, the mechanical speed in radians per second. Okay. And here we can see the whole effect sensor signals. Going from low to high. So that covers everything we learned in today's video. And in the next video, we will see how we can use a hysteresis current control loop to regulate BLDC motor currents. And by doing that, we can actually regulate the speed. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you for having me here today. And if you want simulation file, you can click uh, in, on the link in the description and subscribe to my email list and I will send it to you. And that way also you can get notification for any of my future content courses, etc, uh, etc. Et okay, have a good day and see you next time.